That's really clear. We've moved far beyond the, the old days in breast cancer where this routine treatment was just limited to endocrine therapy for hormone receptor positive breast cancer or chemotherapy otherwise. So, um, you know, all patients up front are screened for estrogen receptor and HER2, which defines the initial stages of therapy. And then in the advanced stage um, of breast cancer, we have you know really a range of, t of treatments that are available now, starting with trastuzumab, but building on to drugs like trastuzumab and tanzine and trastuzumab deruxtecan. For uh, PI3 kinase mutant breast cancers, we have drugs like alpalacib, which um, inhibit PI3 kinase very strongly, probably a little too strongly because uh, hyperglycemia is a big challenge with those drugs, but we're really excited about the development of newer um, mutant selective PI3 kinase inhibitors, allosteric inhibitors from Relay Therapeutics and LOXO that offer the opportunity to really squelch the activity specifically of mutant PI3 kinase while sparing wild type PI3 kinase. So that offers the potential of really hitting the cancer cells very hard in these patients while preventing the, the pretty significant toxicities that uh, limit the use of those drugs. Uh, beyond those agents, we've got sasetuzumab govitikan, which is an anti-TROP2 uh, antibody drug conjugate uh, in breast cancer, which is approved in triple negative breast cancer. And following data from Tropic-02 is also coming into use in uh, hormone receptor positive cancer. And then, you know, post-aromatase inhibitors, which we've had for a while, we know ESR1 mutations are very important in the escape from those drugs. We're also quite excited to see new drugs coming on the scene this year. For example, elicestrant, which is an oral um, estrogen receptor degrader, which uh, offers the potential to have a better, easier to deliver, more tolerable, tolerable treatment than fulvestrant, which was the, you know, the previous leader in this space.